bum 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 Who was Thomas Owe Edison? Dun 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 dun. Wolf, this guy. Let's get started right now. All right. Who was Thomas Alva Edison? Well, Thomas Alva Edison was, as we say, one of the best inventors of all time. Well, that gives you a good appetite. But another thing is that Thomas Alva Edison was a Jewish dad. He gave his friend, he gave his um, friend some worm juice just to see if she could fly. And by the way, she didn't. She just got sick and he got a licking. And then after that, he wouldn't let that stop his curiosity. After even being stung by a bumble nest by trying to be the incredible Hulk and smash it up into pieces and see, examine each one of them out in Bruce Banner way. Even after getting a lot of stings, he didn't have much common sense. He still was curious, although he would never go to a bumble nest ever again. At the age of eight years old, he got a scarlet fever and after being recovered, he lost most of his hearing. And that might be the, one of the reasons why he didn't pay attention much at school. After his mom heard about what the teachers were calling him, basically, they were, she was this man. Not at Thomas, but at the teachers. So she took him out of school, way, and just homeschooled him herself. Also, she had to research daily on new topics. And now, for Thomas Alva Edison, who now wants to be called Tom, at 12 years old, he found a job at a railroad station. And that railroad job was a good job because he was able to sell newspapers as the newsboy. And eventually, even started his own newspaper where basically he earned the money like print, run, 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 scribble, 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 scribble. Come! Stamp! 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 And so on and so on until he got new news articles. He sold 200 copies every day. <clears throat> Eventually, after a sell, after during the Civil War, he sent some telegraph messages, and everyone, everyone knew what the telegraph was. They were curious for more and like let's do some gossip and watch some news. They didn't like like basically read some news, you know, because they didn't have television news like CNN back then anyways so now that that's that what happened next well there's not much that happened next except that after the civil war three years after the civil war he well moved to boston massachusetts and invented the electric voting machine he tried to sell it to every politician he could know all of them failed because they said we love voting for a long long time because then we can convince everyone else to vote for me and that's how the voting system works and that is the main reason why this voting machine is not going to be useful for politicians young man even congress agreed on that so edison found out that he will never found out the one reason good reason this one to just well make inventions one good reason Inventions are here because they make people's lives happier. Another one is that he vowed to never create an invention unless the public wanted it. Or I guess would want it, but in this case wanted it. So in uh, 1869, he, he moved to New York City and he developed the Universal Stock Printer. And in 1870, he moved to New Jersey and so ma started manufacturing and invention factory. And he started a manufacturing and an invention factory. And I would love to be boss of that factory. Also, I don't really have. I'm, I'm too young. In 1871, he married Mary. He married Mary Stillwell on Christmas Day, 
December 25th, and in 1874, he created a quadruplex telegraph, basically a telegraph that can send four messages at the same time, and then receiving four messages at the same time. Wow, it's like a phone, except like one out of one millionth of a phone. Eventually, in 1876, he moved to Menlo Park, which is basically where his most famous home is, and his most famous lab is built at, which is also the place where he'll do most of his future inventions. About a few, few years later, um, in, uh, a year later after that, in 1877, he created the carbon button, where basically it's just a button added to the telegraph, telephone, 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 that actually could make the sound louder. Back then, before the carbon button, everyone would have to shout. Like on one end, Wait, let me do a demonstration. This is the mouthpiece, this is the hearing piece. On one end, hello! On the other side, hello! See the difference? And with the carbon button, with the carbon button, it was this. Hello. Hello. Basically that. This is the trick. They just converted all of that into electrical signals. And then just sent those electrical signals to the receiver, which turned those electrical signals back into sound that we can hear. And the more bits you use, eventually in computer science you learn that these are created with bits, and the more bits you use, the higher the sound quality! Even this guy is, even that guy, that, that, that guy is surprised. Okay, enough telephones. And then he created his most prized possession, the phonograph. It's basically a CD player, but instead of CDs, there's this tin foil with grooves on it, and that's how you hear it. Mary and a little lamb. And that's it. Or at least that's much of the poem I can remember. It's so much my brain. But why can't I memorize this poem? Anyways, then he created the electric light bulb for taking two and a half years, because for some reason he can find the right filament. He even used human hair. He even used human hair, ouch, literally this, as a filament, even using tissue paper, and fishing lines, and every other everyday object. Bamboo worked well, but it was not, it was too expensive for the public, so he didn't use it. He found out that it was a carbon a wire that could work. It was cheap to make a forge and also the light bulb. Even with this, it was so cheap and enough for the public. Cheap enough for the public to even buy. In 1882, he brought this electric light all the way to a square mile of NYC. And in 1884, sadly, his wife died. And in 1888, wait, what? No, 1886, he married Mina Miller. And he also bought this building called Glens Mount at the West Orange of New Jersey. And then a year later, and he built his West Orange Laboratory, which had a physics lab, chemistry lab, and a library, where basically that was where all of his public interviews were taken up. And in 1888, he created a kinetograph and a kinetoscope, which was basically a way to see moving pictures, videos. You're looking at a moving picture right now, except, I guess, using bits and computer wires, but other than that, in 1900, he started working on the storage battery for a car, for a car, electric car, and you can thank Edison for the electric car, and also I thank him for actually giving the base model for Tesla. I'm not even sure if Tesla used that, but never mind. In 1927, he worked on a natural rubber project for car tires. It doesn't say how long, but it doesn't even say if it succeeded. And in 1928, he received a special medal from Congress. And in 1931, on October 18th, he died. At 10 p. At 10 p.m. That say, President 
Vancouver asked every American in the nation with an electric light to turn them off. It was complete darkness of the nation for just one minute in honor of Thomas Edison, the guy who lit up the world with electricity. And then un until LED lights came. And so, what did you think you learned about Thomas Edison's life? Or what, what, what do you think you learned about Tom's life? Not Uncle Tom, Thomas Edison's Tom. And now that that's done with this video, I just wonder what this thing was so good at. What this guy was good at. It reminds me of food and one of his most famous things. Genius is 1% one percent inspiration and 99% perspiration. That is one of the best things I've ever heard, and that's probably the only quote from Thomas Edison I'll ever remember well. And about food. Well, the bite I just took has some energy. If I take the things in my body, the working organs, to create it into energy. And that energy is an analogy to genius. That means inventions are not just ideas. You have to work hard to actually create it. If you fail first, you can do it again. Fail, 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 at least if you fail, another quote here, I didn't fail 200 times, I just succeeded in knowing what doesn't work. And that is one of the best things about Thomas Edison. Thomas Alva Edison was one of the best people who ever lived in this planet. With over 1093 patents, the world record for the most number of patents, and no one has beaten it to this day. Well, I just hope you learned something from Mr. Edison's life. And I certainly did. That he's not the same as Einstein! But other than that, see you guys in the next episode. Sign out. Peace!